In this video, I want to review how you can work with point exporting as well as investigating different point reports. To preface this, just know that I'm using an anchor point drawing with all of my points indicating my anchor bolt point locations where they're designed to be. Let's begin by going over reports. I've reviewed deviation point data in another video and I'll make sure I link that in the description if you need more reference. But let's go ahead and go over the detailed point data and the summary point data and how you can work with the reporting software that's in Hilti Field Points. First, you need to select the points that you want to make a report for. Yes, you can make a report on only specific entities or just select the entire drawing of all your field points. I'll do the entire drawing. I'll go ahead and export a detailed point data report and I'll press OK. Now, depending on the number of points you have, this report might take a few seconds to generate. Notice that it doesn't export it necessarily to a PDF, but more of a PDF viewer. What you see here is actually what they call a PRNX file, which is a file type that helps create master reports and can be used for a vast range of reporting. It's pretty simple here, but that's what this file type is. And I'll explain all of the options to you up here, as well as how you can save this as a PDF or an Excel document for your reference. First, what does this report show? As you can see, this detailed point data shows the point number, the X, Y, and Z location, the state and exported information, as well as the layer and attributes of each and every individual point. I'll go over what this exported means in a moment when we actually export points. Now, the only difference between detailed point data and summary point data is simply the amount of information you see. Let me go ahead and make a summary point data so you can see the difference. Over here on the right, I've retained a PDF version of the detailed data, and over here on the left is a summary, and simply you can see that in the summary point data, your XYZ coordinates are all in one row, and the staked and exported information, as well as layer information, is omitted. Most of the time, all I need regarding my points is the summary point data. I don't really need to know if it's been exported, staked, or the layer that was placed on in my drawing. But if you do, feel free to use the detailed point data. Now let's talk about the neat options you have available to you when you're working in this PRNX file type. First and foremost, obviously you have the ability to save it. You can always export the document to a PDF, HTML, Excel file, etc. You also have the ability to send an email of this document. One important note about emailing a PDF, it's going to ask you for a page range and just know that you don't have to put a page range here unless you know that you're only exporting a part of the document. If this is left blank, the entire document will be sent. These options simply let you add either a color or a watermark to the back of your data. You can add a custom, web-based, or system-based color according to your preference. Or you can add a watermark. This can be a text that you want to have in the background, such as top secret, or what I enjoy doing, a picture. Simply browse for your picture. I'll use this image of a total station. Indicate how you want it centered, indicate how you want it aligned, and of course your transparency. And as you can see, you can have both text and picture. I'll remove the text because I don't need it to be top secret. And now you can see I have added a watermark to the back of my data. Use these arrows or the scroll page to navigate page by page. Here are your zoom options and your pan options. And here are your scaling options as needed. Lastly, if you need any additional page setup options, that's located here. Hopefully that's sufficient for you to make your reports using this feature as needed. But let's move on and talk about how you can export the CSV data from your points. Most of the time, what you mainly need from your drawing is the CSV data, because you're gonna be taking this data out of this software and importing it into a tablet for layout use. Tablets require CSV or TXT data for this information. For simplicity, I'll simply keep using CSV. When you get to this window, it's asking you to select, again, specific field points or all field points from your drawing. For my case, I'll go ahead and select all my points. You'll notice it found all the points in my drawing, and it shows all the types of points that I have in my drawing. For me, the only points that I have are manual points that I made with the manual point option. However, if you made points with any other option in this field points window, all of them would appear so that you can easily filter between the points that you've made there's a chance that you most likely would simply select all your points. Or if you know you only need to select a certain amount based off the type of point you made, simply make sure you uncheck and check as preferred. 
Lastly, down here, it's important to make sure you remember the format you use to export. You can use any format of your choice as long as you make sure that you and the infield layout team are aligned. Right now, my format is set to NEH, which means that my coordinates, when they're exported, are going to be in northern, eastern, height, coordinate order with the northern value first. If you prefer ENH, simply choose ENH. Or if you prefer the headers to have an XY coordinate instead of a N or an E, simply select what you prefer. Industry standard for the US and most parts of Canada is NEH. Next, you have your decimal symbol. And again, if you're in the US or almost all parts of Canada, a period is used as the main decimal symbol between points, meaning 13.2 inches will be represented by 13 period two inches. If, however, you prefer to use a comma and that's the software you're using, of course, you can use a comma as that decimal symbol. Now you have these two options down here, set objects as exported or include previously exported points. And this brings me back to what exported means. When you are exporting points, you can indicate here that you want the software to remember that that point's already been exported. The reason people sometimes choose to do this is because of two reasons. Number one, they can indicate on the report that it's been exported and delivered to a customer or to a field team. Or for the second reason right here, you can choose or choose not to export previously exported objects. So a very simple example, let's say that you've designed all of your points and exported everything and set all those objects as exported. You come back the next day and realize you forgot two or three points. Simply make sure that you come in here and have include previously exported objects unchecked. That way, the only points you're going to export are the brand new points. Again, this is complete preference to you, but hopefully that makes sense as to what they mean. For my workflow, I almost never have said objects as exported because I'm able to control the points I export simply by using this simplified select button. And I almost always have include previously exported objects checked just in case for whatever reason I might have accidentally checked set objects as exported and I didn't know about it. This is something that I found to be my best workflow for how I work. Once you're happy with your export settings, you can simply go to this ellipsis, choose the file path you like to save it to, and of course your file name, which I'll call test points. And I'll say okay. Now that I've opened my CSV file, it simply looks like any other CSV file. You can see that I have the point name, semicolon, and then it's separated by northern, eastern, height, which is the format that I chose, as well as the attributes that follow, if I have any. Now, one thing you can see here is that my units are units of feet. You can see it's abbreviated up here in the title column of my CSV. My experience has been a drawing that is drawn in units of inches or units of feet is going to export the points in units of feet. If you have a drawing that you are drawing in units of millimeters or meters, that drawing will export the points in units of meters. I recommend as you use this for the first time to make sure you open your CSV file and just make sure you know which units it exported your points out as. So that way when you communicate with the field team, they know what units to use when they import it into their tablet. Now one last note about reporting, and this might be something that might help you when you work with CSV files. Every CSV file, because they're delimited, can always be separated by columns in Excel if you ask Excel to do that for you. And here's a quick how-to video of that. If you simply highlight your column that all the data is in, and you can see here that everything's in column A, you go to data, text to columns, and simply Im indicate that it's delimited with whatever delimiter you chose. And for my case, that was a semicolon. And I'll say finish. Now all the data is now separated out so that if I need to, for instance, make all of these heights zero, I can do that in one click. Or if I need to adjust the point coordinates of a point or even the name of a point, I can do so. And then of course, resave the file. One thing to be aware of is that if you do separate your points out into columns, that the new delimiter for your points will be a comma. Here is the same file opened in Notepad, and you can see that a comma has been placed as the delimiter. And it simply does that because Excel, when you export out a CSV file that has columns, it separates that column with a comma, which you can see here. And the reason I mention that is because if you were to give the CSV file to somebody in the field, they would also need to know what coordinate order these, these points were in, the units, as well as the delimiter separating the values. As long as they know that, any total station that's industry standard should be able to import these points. Lastly, let me review the last export option, 
HPL 3.0, or in other words, HPL 30. This option is available in, I believe, 2021 or newer versions of Hilti Field Points. And basically what this option does is it combines the points and the drawing into one for an easy import only on a Hilti tablet or a Hilti-based software. So let me go ahead and use this. You can see it has a, a little zip file indicating it's gonna zip it all together. I'll use this HPL 30 option. I'll select my entire drawing. Once selected, check your points for your preference. By default, I like to have all these checked. Now down here on the options, you'll see some new options. It's asking if you want to include the wireframe DXF. What this means is that when you export all of these points, do you want to include the drawing as part of that? Sometimes I leave this checked and sometimes I leave it unchecked. Just know that sometimes exporting a drawing as a DXF might not bring every single element in the background with it. Sometimes it omits certain things because DXF is a different file type than a DWG. However, if you're using Hilti tablets, you'll see how this is actually a very convenient feature when it works, which it most often does. Now you have the other options as normal, set options as exported, I'll simply leave that unchecked, include previously exported points, I like to leave that checked, and ensure unique point numbers when possible, I like to leave that checked as well, because I know that when I go to use the Hilti tablets, the tablets are gonna need to have unique point numbers too. I'll save it to my desktop, and I'll call this test points. And you'll receive a notification that says exported successfully. Now one thing you didn't see in this export option is units. It didn't ask you for NEH units. It didn't ask you for decimal units, etc. It simply asked you how you wanted to export it. And that's one advantage of exporting HPL 30 is that the tool is automatically going to be able to recognize those units when you transfer an HPL 30 file to a Hilti based tablet or software. To show you that, here's a Hilti based software called Profus Layout Office. Let me go ahead and say import and I'll go ahead and bring in this test point HPL 30 file. As you can see, it brought in all the points just fine without me having to go in and edit any height information or point information. Now the drawing in the background looks a little squampus, and so what I would probably do is simply re-import the drawing as its own element, such as coming here to the import button and import drawing, because it looks like it didn't fully export properly because it went from a DWG to a DXF, which sometimes could happen. However, simply using the export HPL30 option, at least only with your points, ensures that your users in the field that are actually laying out the points and importing it onto their tablets can simply import in one click without having to worry about northern, eastern, height, units, and the like. It's already prepared for them in this HPL30 file format. And again, use this include wireframe DXF to your preference and to whether or not it's going to work for you. I hope that by watching this video, you can figure out your own desired way of how you want to export points. And I ask you to please leave any questions you have in the comments.